Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Pitstick at SoulProof.com and talking about a topic, am I a Christian? I get asked this often and it's not a, a short answer, although the short answer is yes, uh, but there are some sides to it. It's not as simple as that. First of all, I present this topic with respect for all the different beliefs out there. I understand that people are willing to uh, kill others and wage war over these sorts of topics, so I, I treat them with respect. I know it's a very emotional, very importantly heart-held topic for a lot of people. Here's my perspective though, and I feel uh, led to share it. First of all, I was brought up in a Lutheran church, and around age 17, I started going to a Nazarene church uh, because my girlfriend went there. Good reason when you're in high school, right? I gave my life publicly to Christ at age 18 and again at age 21. In 1972, at age 19, I was driving uh, on a freeway, total ice, thick, thick ice. Uh, I was going to my grandma's funeral, in fact. <clears throat> was traveling 15 miles an hour and a long trip and knowing that I would be late for my grandma's own funeral and so I tried to uh, pass a semi-truck in front of me. I sped all the way up to 25 miles an hour, again going on pure ice, passed the truck, went way ahead, and then pulled back into the, the right side lane. When I did that, my car started spinning, and I was just spinning time after time. Every time I spun, I would see the semi getting closer and closer to me. And finally, as it got so close that I thought, well, I'm going to be hit by this truck pretty soon and die, I just yelled out, Jesus help me. Immediately I spun off the road, and just as I did, this big semi went by. So that was certainly an amazing uh, miracle in my life. And it's a law of physics that a, an object in constant motion doesn't change direction unless acted upon by an outside force. I knew there was an outside force involved. So I never took back my commitment to God and Christ. And from that day since, I've continued to pray to be used by God, to know the highest truth, and to let my life reflect that. However, over the years, some, mm, I would say, some shortcomings in that model that I was in came up. First of all, uh, one Sunday evening I was in an altar call, and keep in mind this is a three times a week church, so everybody in the church had been saved and been to the altar many, many times. This is the preaching to the choir. Well, we had an outside evangelist came in for the Sunday evening service, and he went through this whole talk and sermon, and then he started up the altar call. and. It was Sunday evening, people were tired. We'd already been there that morning. As I say, everybody in there had been saved. It was the church faithful. Well, he wanted to see the numbers now at the altar call. So he started saying things like this, I swear to God. Friends, <clears throat> don't make God hurt your loved ones, maybe even take your loved ones because you don't know Christ. And so come on down to the altar. And a few people came down on that one. Then he said, everyone who loves Jesus, come down to the altar. Oh, people looked at each other like, how can you not on that one? Almost everybody did, but I and a few other people. And at that point, I actually crossed my arms and thought, you know, this is just too much. This is not balanced for me at least. That was certainly a turning point. I had a, a talk with a, a friend named David around that time, and I was asking questions. So, at that time, of course, I believed that there was one way to heaven, there was one way to God. Uh, but then I saw some, some problems with that. First of all, that means that a large percentage of the world's people who ever live will be going to hell. That was a model. You know, they didn't accept Christ as your Savior, you go to hell. Black and white, night and day. So, well, what about all the people that never heard about God, that never heard about Jesus? Well, David said, my <clears throat> wise source at that time, God has a special plan for them. Hmm, okay, well what about people who are retarded? Special plan. What about people who are, 
who were alcoholics and drug addicts and weren't in their right mind didn't have a chance to choose Jesus. God has a special plan for them. So I said, well, you mean actually people would be better off if they were, if they never heard of Jesus, if they were total drunks and addicts and they were retarded, because then they would have a chance of not going to hell. They'd have a chance for that special plan. Well, he didn't get that one. Uh, so I went to theology school after graduating with a pre-med degree, partly because I had these questions I wanted answered. I mean, these are important questions. And so I learned that important changes had been made in the Bible. You know, I had heard up to that point, this is God's Word. Well, God didn't write it, humans wrote it. And the fact is it had been changed over time and changed a lot. Certain books deleted, certain books added, interpretations, translations, deletions, addi additions, and certainly there have been changes. I'll talk in the next video about what I call the power of prepositions and how that helped me become the sort of Christian I am and understand how one can be a Christian, but also embrace all the other religions and see that truth is one, paths are many. So I talk about this on soulproof.com, our book, on the documentary film. Be sure to visit, and most importantly, learn about these things, pray about these things, talk about them with others so that you can make the best decision yourself and have the closest relationship with God possible.